What's up, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Blade Talk, where I'll be talking about my personal opinions on some recent blading news and some topics I would like to talk about. First up, this weekend is Frankie Morales' third annual uh, invitational competition. Um, it's October 22nd in Miami, Florida at the Skateboard Skatebird Skate Park. Um, if you're in Miami or in the area, definitely check that out. It's going to be a dope event. There's tons of people, tons of sponsors, a $5,000 first prize, and Frankie Morales never fails to impress and I'm really looking forward to see what's going to come out of this. Also on the topic of Frankie Morales, Frankie has been teasing us saying that he will be releasing and announcing some a project that he's been working on for a long time now at the Invitational. Um, he did release a teaser image called, uh, and it's named Frankie's World, The Lost City. Um, anyone who knows anything about Frankie Morales, he has, you know, dipped and dabbed in movies and video games. So... This could be anything. Um, it looks dope from the image. The artwork's done by Mike Murder Johnson, which is another blading legend and New York legend. So I'm pumped about that. And uh, I, I really think it possibly could be a video game. You know, I really feel that Frankie understands, you know, how the world works and what people are looking for and what's going to put the sport out there. And he's really de dedicated to really pushing and, and, and putting blading in front of people that normally wouldn't be exposed to it um if it is that's awesome i can't wait to see what it is I, I doubt it would be just a regular skater jump and grind video game it looks pretty in-depth it looks awesome as far as the artwork if that's what's what, what it's going to look like um it also could possibly be a movie we all know frankie's been in movies you know he was in alita uh which also had some kind of skating in it uh, along with other pros and legends um, so either or sounds dope, looks dope, looking forward to it. And I'm excited for that announcement. Next up, we have another release from USD skates for the 25th anniversary. And it's a Takeshi Yasutoko pro boot. Anyone who doesn't know who Takeshi Yasutoko is, I mean, he's been killing vert for well over 20 years since he was very, very young with his brother. They have multiple X games, gold medals. Um, and to be honest, I really don't understand how this is only his second skate. I mean, his first skate was a shared pro skate from K2 way back in the day around like 2003, 2004 ish. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know it was around that time. And that was awesome. But like this guy has been doing so much over decades and I don't understand how companies have not given him a pro boot. Um, it's a dope color scheme, a nice brown and black scheme. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him. He deserves it. I mean, he's been killing it. He still kills it. And he also kills street. And it's well-deserved. It's definitely well-deserved. And I want to see more of Takeshi and, and Edo. You know, both of the brothers. I know Edo's a little older than Takeshi. But, you know, it, it's awesome to see that they've been in the game for so long. And they still keep pushing it. They've broke so many records. They go, they air higher than anyone on the planet. You know, and that, that's in the record books. Like, you can't get more air than... Takeshi and Edo Yasutoko on a half pipe like you're not doing it these guys fly there's no way it's like they have anti-gravity boots or something and, and their spin game is crazy Takeshi's tech game is crazy I've never seen someone do some of the switch ups that kid does on vert you know like some of those switch ups that he does and, and, and combos that he does like I've seen in street videos I've seen in the streets and it makes sense but in a vert line in a competition setting, it's just insane. And it's, it's always amazing to see. And hats off to Sakeshi. Well-deserved boot. And it's a boot that I actually like. And I've never skated Aeons before. But I'm a big fan of USD. Always have been. And they've never let me down in the skate. So I'm sure it's going to be an awesome skate. So on the topic of skates, I'm skating a new setup right now. Um, I've my, my Mesmer plate started to crack about a month ago um it didn't affect my skating so i didn't think too much of it and honestly it's my own doing because i was doing a lot of set slides for like a week straight um but that being said there is a hairline crack along the edge and it's only a matter of like a couple of tricks and slipping out before it cracks completely off which i really don't want to do just in case like i want to play with them a little bit um there's also, if anyone knows anything about the Mesmer's, in between the sole plate and the boot, there's a sound dampener, which is like a rubbery material. And it's gotten to the point that there's times if I'm not locked in the right way and I'm grinding, 
it'll hit that rubber and I feel it slowing me down and I just don't want to have any incidents with that. Um, it's also affecting how I bone over into my tricks. I like to bone over almost like if I'm on a rail, if I'm on a ledge and because that sole plate is so worn down, it's just not stable. And, um, for example, I went to do an alley-oop sole the other day on a ledge and this year I've gotten a concussion off of that trick. So my confidence level was so low and it's an easy trick for me. Like I, it's something I've been doing my whole life, but that confidence has gone since the concussion and now like with that soul plate it was just completely obliterated and you know i i just rather eliminate that factor because that fear of falling is what makes you fall that fear and, and non-concentration and non-commitment to the trick is what makes you mess up and it can really end in a very negative way i mean i know the easy answer is you know wear a helmet and all that and i did do that for a little while like if you watch any of my videos from this year um, there's a reason why I was playing the safe route for a while and still am kind of, you know, I'm older now. I have kids. Um, back in the day, I wouldn't have cared, like would have got the concussion and went skating the next day and, and thought nothing of it and just dealt with the headache. But like, it really affected me a little different this time. It's not the first one I've had. And I think it's important to be smart. I mean, I'm, I'm 34 years old. I'm not a dinosaur, but at the same time, like injuries are going to affect me different than it would have when I was 17, 18, 19 years old, when I can just take three months off of work and it was, it was whatever, or I didn't have to worry about taking care of other human beings and doing the things I have to do throughout the day. So, you know, it, it comes with age, it comes with, with really maturity, but if you, if you think I've been taking the safe route, you're right. <laughs> like it's, it's been a little while since I've pushed myself to the point that I know I can go, but I'm, I'm starting to get that confidence back. And hopefully within the next couple of months, you know, a lot of people hibernate in the winter to skate. I'm a New Yorker, man. Like I love skating in the winter. I love skating at night. Like uh, night sessions to me are the best sessions. It's peaceful. The focus is different. The environment's different. I don't know. I mean, I grew up skating Wall Street in downtown Manhattan at two o'clock in the morning with 50 heads. And I love it. I mean, it, it gives me a little comfort. It makes me feel a little bit at home because I'm not in New York anymore. But yeah, like I, I definitely am looking forward to trying to push myself a little more and see where that can go. You know, I'm not trying to go pro or anything, but like, I, I still like to push myself. I still like to see myself progress. And I think everyone should do so. With that being say, said, I'm gonna show you my new setup. Um, I'm right now skating the Montre Livingston Pro Sways. Um, I've had this skate for a while. I have skated it and before the Mesmers and I love them, but I was skating them any rocker um, I had the fat boy liners in them. And the first thing I got to say is I swapped out the liners and I put my Mesmer liners in it. Best decision I've ever made. One of my main complaints about this skate, which there weren't many, was that they're, they weren't super supportive out the box. Um, they were com they were very comfortable. Like, I don't want to say they weren't comfortable. But they weren't super supportive. They felt really flexy. Um, I like choking my skates, and it got to the point that I was choking them, and it was it was kind of giving me more support, but it really wasn't. It was just making it hurt a little bit. So I wasn't really digging that. Um, I tried a few different liners, uh, and it, it just it it was working, but it wasn't the best case scenario for me. Always loved the plates. Always loved the groove. Second thing I want to say is I'm skating them with the Kaiser Fluid 5s off my Mesmers, and I'm also skating them flat. So first thing I have to say about that is I wasn't worried about the flat part because I've been skating flat for almost almost a year, honestly. And I approached it like any other day. And I did experience a little bit of wheel bite more than usual in the first five minutes of the session. And I was trying to figure out why, because I'm so used to skating flat that I just don't feel it really should have been an issue. What I've come to a conclusion about is that what it was is the Mesmer plates, the grooves is a little more far back. So my foot placement was, 
foot uh, my foot placement was not the same as in these skates. It took me maybe three or four Royales to really find that groove again and lock it. Once I did, it was fucking amazing, bro. Like I, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's the combination between how hard these frames are and how how they slide and, and combined with these soul plates because I was skating Featherlight threes, which they're not bad frames, but anyone who skated ground control, I've skated feather lights since the first feather lights were released back in the day. And I, you can ask my boy, Bert, he skated the first session with me with the first feather lights. And I grooved the skates up in a matter of 10 minutes. And it was cool to have my groove right away, but I felt like it was super soft. They wore down way too fast. Um, they're not as solid. These frames are solid as fuck like look how thick these walls are like these frames the power transfer you have and the control you have on them is just unmatched in my opinion you know everyone's different from my type of skating i do a lot of ledge skating you know i, I used to hit rails back in the day a lot but like i'm older i'm bigger like it, it's just a lot of effort now and the reward isn't as satisfying sometimes to me as a nice i like feeling that grittiness on ledges that's just me you know it is what it is but there's just something about these frames that are just fucking amazing, man. And, like, the power transfer felt great. It slid amazing. Um, I skate that ledge all the time. It just felt it felt like a fresh ledge, you know, honestly. And it could be that I, I beat up my Mesmers after a while, so I got used to how they were feeling, and this is a little less beat up. So maybe it's just that new skate feeling. I don't know. Let's see. Only time could tell with that. I'm going to skate them a little bit more before I really make my decision. I'm thinking about doing a review on the Sways in comparison. I wanted to do that before, just never got around to it. But now, seeing the difference before, between then and now, I'm really leaning towards doing that. So if you wanna see that, drop that in the comments. If you wanna know my my full opinion, full review on Sway Skates. Um, second thing I have to say is, it probably, it, the, the support also has to do with this 45 degree strap. Um, I don't typically skate skates that have a 45 degree strap, not because of choice. It's just, I never really had to have a skate that had it, but I will say that it's amazing. Like it keeps your foot locked in and I like that tight support. I have really bad ankles from injuries. So like, I like that support and that solid feeling. And I definitely felt that last night. Um, I didn't get to do too much. My phone died. So I, I, when I started getting into the groove and trying new tricks for, for the camera, it was too late. And I only really had maybe 20 minutes to skate anyway. Um, but yeah, that, that it, it felt awesome. Like I'd had no problem once I found my groove and I was loving it. Like another thing is my landings felt solid. Like I, I really, like it felt solid in the Mesmers. Like, I don't want to say it didn't feel that way. Um, but there's just a certain feeling and a certain pop that I like. Like, I know a lot of guys, like, oh, hold your faking and everything. And I can do that all day, man. Like, that pop back that I do, that I land faking and pop forward, that's that's intentional, man. That's not, like, I can hold my fakie if I want to. I do it all the time. But, like, a lot of times it's a it's an excitement thing. If I If you see me do that land fakie pop forward and take off it's like that's like me high-fiving myself <laughs> as doofy as that sounds but that's the truth like it's intentional and, and i like it. it and some people don't you know it is what it is i don't do it for you so it's okay um but yeah like i'm definitely loving these skates i'm definitely looking forward to having another setup uh another session on them sorry and yeah, it's been fun so far. Last night I had a lot more fun than I thought I was going to have, to be honest, man. Like, I love the Mesmer so much that I thought I was going to hate this setup. And it wasn't even the original setup I was going to skate. I was actually going to put my Them skates back together and skate those because I, I never really gave them a proper street treatment. But, like, some technical difficulties happened, which led to me putting these bad boys back together. And I do not regret it, man. Like, I'm loving it. And... For anyone who's looking into buying a pair of skates but don't want to drop $500, I mean, the Sways have been around for a good minute. Um, I can honestly say, as far as the fit, it's very similar to the, to the Mesmers. So if you want to think of it in a certain way, it's like, think of the Mesmers as almost being like the top of the line version of the Sways. But at the same time, the Sways are a dope fucking skate, man. Like, there's plenty of pros that skate them. Chris Farmer just got a pro Sway. Dominic Sagona is about to get a pro Sway, which 
anyone who knows me, I love Sagona skating, man. Like, hats off to Sagona for even coming back, bro. Like, and then coming back, killing it, and getting another pro skate. Like, good shit, man. But, like, yeah, these the skates are probably around 200 and under for a complete skate, which is insane in today's market. Um, the only thing I will say is liners are everything when it comes to, to fit now. And I've always been a liner guy. You know, back in the day, I skated Sifka liners a lot. If anyone knows what Sifka is, and Trust liners, and Rain liners, I was old, Jug liners, I was always swapping stuff and trying new things. Like, this is not the stock setup that the Montre is common. Um, shout out Montre Livingston. Um, he's an amazing skater. He's actually based out of North Carolina, so it's dope that I get to see him every now and then. Um, it's my, my son's favorite skater. But, like, it, it, it's a dope skate, man, and I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm actually more impressed with it now than when I first got them. And now for the topic I wanted to speak about, um, and that's mental blocks in skating and how we create our own mental blocks and how we can get around that. So I've talked about previously about tricks that are basic tricks and how now being older and having a different approach a little bit to skating, how that's changed. And that goes for everything. I mean, even when you first start skating, there is a time where you don't know any names of tricks. You don't understand the technicalities of it. And you're just going off of, oh, that looked cool. Let me try that. And it worked. Like, you don't think about, oh, this is hard because it's a top side. Or this is this because it's a boot trick. Or I'm skating flat versus any rock. You don't think about all that. And I think as we get older and as we get more involved in what we're doing, all that stuff kind of makes its way into your thought process. And I feel now that I've come back to skating after taking a couple of years off and everything, um, I approach things a lot differently. Like there's days that I can kind grind 17,000 times in a row. And there's days that my ankles just don't want to do anything topside remotely. And it is what it is. And I've heard Derek Henderson say that, like, you have to approach it as is today the day or is it not like, can you do it or not right now? Like, it doesn't matter if you warmed up. It doesn't matter how long you haven't skated in. It's all here. It's all in your head. Um, the same thing goes for, like, rails and, and different things. Like, there's certain obstacles. There's sometimes that I, I, I'm more confident on a rail than I am on a ledge. But to be honest, like, I've always been more comfortable on down rails than on a straight rail. Like, I've skated so many more stair rails and down rails than I have handicap rails. I hate skating handicap rails. Like I know it sounds so dumb because people see the stairs and going down as like a bigger challenge, but I don't know if it's my height. You know, I'm six three, so like it, it it's it I have long legs. So to get up to a waist high rail on me is usually like a monster rail for someone else and then i don't like skating small things like in height because i'm tall like there's a certain height that it's like if i go to a skate park and i'm skating like if you ever seen any clips of me skating at marsh creek skate park there's a smaller ledge that i skate a little bit and i warm up on that usually but that's actually the ledge i got the concussion on like and it really came from i'm used to picking my knees up when i jump that because it's so low and I'm so tall, I don't really have to do much to do it. So then it becomes more of an obstacle for me because I have to under jump from what I'm used to. And to me, that can be a lot more dangerous than trying to hit something that seems higher or more difficult. Like I feel like when it's higher up and you have a little more leverage to save yourself, it's a lot more safe. And yeah, you can still mess yourself up really bad, but you're more likely to save yourself than if you're skating something small and you have nothing to grab if you slip out because then you're just going straight to the floor. And everyone knows the things that we do, sometimes we're in some really weird positions and transition. And when you're going down in a weird position, it could really fuck your day up. Like, I'm, I'm being honest with that. Um, and I feel a lot of these blocks we put in our heads to kind of try to protect ourselves. And I get it. But there's a time where you have to come out your comfort zone. If you're skating a P rail every day, that's awesome. You know, no, no disrespect to anyone that skates P rails and boxes every day. And that is one of the best ways you can practice and learn your shit because you're practicing. But that's exactly what it is. It's practice 
for when you go out and actually skate. And I feel that part of it has kind of left the the world of skating and the idea of practice and sessions and just going and doing a million royales to make sure you know how to royale. You know, these mental blocks, like, for instance, I like kind grinds. That's my most comfortable top side that I can do is kind grinds and sweat stance. To some people, those are really hard. Honestly, a top sole to me is like rocket science compared to doing a kind grind now i can top sole a rail top soles and ledges like i i used to do them but like just the positioning feels weird to me now it could be my knees or my knee shot or whatever but like i feel so much more comfortable rolling up to a ledge and hitting a sweat stance on it than hitting a top sole or top acid on it um that being said like one of the reasons why I'm really comfortable with kind grinds is because I'm really comfortable with royales. Even though I haven't been doing them as much as I used to, which that's going to change. But when I was younger, like I, I could royale anything, like rails, everything. Just pull up, royale it, and feel fine. And from a royale to a kind grind, it's just a couple of inches of rotation. A couple of inches of just like over commitment to turn their shoulders into that kind grind, and you got it just slap that foot down. But I would never have that confidence if I didn't go out and go skate by myself all the time and just royale, 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 royale. You know, like, and I know sometimes my clips, like if I if I post Instagram posts or YouTube shorts and stuff like that, it gets a little repetitive, but honestly, it's just practice for me. Like, to me, the real deal is when I'm not filming. Like, I'm gonna keep it, keep it real, everybody. The real deal for me and what I love about skating is when I'm not filming and I'm not trying to capture anything. It's when I show up to a session, I throw my headphones on, there's a bunch of guys and we're just feeding off of each other, feeding off of each other. You know, I come from a graffiti background and I grew up with a bunch of b-boys, my uncles and DJs and everything. And the competitive nature of that is what keeps it going. I mean, me and my homies, like we didn't cheer for each other for tricks that we felt were mediocre and i'm not saying to talk down on people i'm saying to push each other i mean it was just hey you do this i'm gonna one-up you just to see how far we can go like just let's just keep one-upping each other and and just see how far we can go and at the end of the session everybody killed it everybody had a good time everybody's laughing and I feel like that's what, what the vibe that some people miss. You know, I have friends that tell me all the time, oh, it doesn't feel the same, man. And it's like, that's why. It's because we're not pushing each other. We're not motivating each other. It's a lot of like acceptance. It's accepting, oh, we can do this. So we're going to just keep doing that. Oh, do your thing. But like, push yourself, man. Like push, push others. And I really feel that's been lost in the last couple of years from what I've seen since I've come back. I mean, again, different generations act differently. I don't want to get into that Gen Z, Gen X, boomer bullshit, millennial bullshit, whatever. Everyone's different and I dig it. But me personally, I like the competitiveness sometimes. I mean, we used to start our day off with playing each other in skate, bro. Like, I don't even do that. Like, I don't see anyone do that anymore. Like, we used to pull up the session, like, all right, who's playing skate? Just to warm up. Or we had this thing, and shout out John Tool, the homie John Tool from Staten Island. Um, one of his approaches was do everything natural and switch for five minutes. Just until you, you can't do it anymore. Like, roll up, soul, switch soul. Acid, switch acid. Royale, switch royale. And just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's repetitive, repetitiveness. It's reps. It's like working out. It's like bodybuilding. Like you have to do that stuff to build yourself up. So when you do go skate or like if you are filming a section, no one has time sometimes on spots to warm up. Like we would go to a warm up spot. And if you're a street skater, you should know this. Definitely. If you warm up, whatever, you go to the next spot. Guess what? You're cold. If you were driving in a car or like if you're not doing what we were doing back in the day skating from spot to spot, you're going to be cold. You're going to have to warm up again. Certain spots, there is no warming up on a spot. Like there's certain spots that it's like, it's do or die from the moment you get there. You may be able to approach it a few times, but it's do or die once you start jumping onto that or you, you're gapping it or whatever. So I just feel people need to practice more and skate to skate. Don't skate to get clips. I mean, I'm someone who uses social media and I love it, but I also use it as a learning tool for myself. Um, I used to hate seeing myself skate and I regret that because I never filmed myself. 
because I didn't like seeing myself. I was very insecure about style, like New York skaters, style is everything. I was very insecure about that. And I kind of wish I wasn't so that I could have looked at it and I could have just worked on myself. Now it's different and we're able to do this and we're putting out videos and clips and everything daily. So like, if you're doing that, you should be running the motions every day. Like when you do skate, man, like it, it's, it's, it's important. It's important. It's only going to make you a better skater. Like, fuck it. Who, who, who says shit's repetitive? They don't like it. They don't want to see it. Cool. But when you skate with me and you see me do tricks, you've never seen me do on Instagram. <laughs> it is what it is. Because, like, a lot of times you already know you can do it. You just need that muscle memory to know when you feel like doing it, you got it. You know, like, it, it's just a matter of... of, of trial and error and and really drilling yourself it's drills man people do basic training the military does basic training and people go to shooting ranges people go do all this stuff to to hone in on their skills if you're not honing in on your skills you're never going to progress or you're going to progress but it's not really going to be in the way you think it should be or or it should be but yeah it's just those mental blocks those things that we're putting in our own heads try to conquer that that's the battle it's always mind over matter it's always like you versus you like it's no one else you know if you're see don't get discouraged when you go to a session you see someone killing it and you feel like you can't keep up keep up at your own pace but push yourself make sure you have a point of like all right this is the best i can and when you feel like you're hitting that point and it, 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 you know when to stop because that's another thing know when to stop don't keep going just because you want that trick know that there is tomorrow man like I mean, again, if you're someone who travels for skating or you skate different spots, different cities, sometimes there is no tomorrow for that spot, but it is what it is. Sometimes you're going to conquer the spot. Sometimes the spot conquers you. You know, that's the game. That's the game for everything. You know, that's life. Life conquers you or you conquer life. You know, every, every day is different, but that's it. That's all I really wanted to talk about. Um, I hope everyone's having a great day. I hope everyone gets to go out and skate and enjoy themselves. Um, I'm looking forward, to, like I said, to the Frankie Morales Invitational and what comes from that. I'm looking forward to that announcement. Again, congratulations um, to Keshi Yasutoko on his pro skate, his pro Aeon. Um, hopefully, I can pick up pick up a pair of those because they, they look fire. Like I really like the brown color scheme. Um, and that's it. If you enjoyed this video, you want to see more, like and subscribe. Drop a comment on your thoughts and hit notifications so you see when I post new videos. Till then, peace, man.